So hello, my name is Gedr Sramshis. I'm working in InfoTrust as senior consultant. Today I'm going to uh, share with you solution which helps uh, companies to uh, report and manage their sustainability. Uh, initially, this tool, SAP Performance and Profitability Management, was created for finance industry so they could easily allocate uh, costs to cost objects and forecast their financial data. And now this tool can be uh, also applied to the sustainability because sometimes we want also to uh, allocate CO2 emissions to our products, to maybe clients or suppliers. Uh, but uh, first things first, uh, how do we start when we uh, start our sustainability journey? We expect that companies, they have their strategy, scope, their ba base year, uh, and they have some long-term goals towards the uh, reaching their targets on ESG topic. Uh, where we can help, we can help to automatize uh, the way how they are tracking their uh, KPIs. Usually we start with uh, three, maybe five KPIs, because the most important thing is to establish a process firstly, and uh, only then when process is established, you want to uh, increase the amount of KPIs you are tracking. Uh, one, another thing, uh, when you are going to your targets, towards your targets, you are implementing uh, various measures. You want to uh, measure the impact and even measure impact before you implementing it. Uh, so you can imagine that, uh, for example, if you have a good calculation model established, before implementing anything, you can run one if simulations and see which of your initiatives can do the best impact for your company in uh, to, towards reaching your targets. Uh, all the meaning of this slide is that sustainability is a process. Uh, I represent here the plan, do, check, act cycle, which was uh, very popularized by Deming, who started the quality revolution and we remember this quality revolution in 70s, 80s, or 90s. Uh, all companies were just crazy about implementing ISO standards to their management systems. And now I see that uh, many companies will be implementing sustainability uh, standards, sustainability processes. And this uh, so-called sustainability revolution uh, will be very much the same, that it is the continuous improvement and you want to have a process and not a one-time thing in your company. When you choose your solution, you of course have to take into consideration some challenges. Uh, today, there are uh, many standards and you can imagine that uh, various stakeholders like your banks can ask similar KPI, but uh, in different standards. So you want to have a tool where you keep calculated your KPIs in various standards. You also want that this uh, tool will be adaptable to changes. Uh, if something changes, you don't want to redo all the calculations. You want to apply uh, the rule instantly and see how uh, it impacts your KPI. So just save the maintenance uh, time for your uh, calculations. Sustainability, the third thing challenge is uh, that sustainability, I think is forever in organizations. This non-financial disclosure uh, reporting will be for many years because United Nations, uh, Europe Union, they have targets up until 2030, 2050. So it will never go away. You, you need to establish a process of sustainability. It's no, simple uh, task to do. It is just the reality. And fourth thing, uh, behind you know every CO2 uh, kilogram, CO2 ton, there are euros hidden. So you want to integrate your financial data to sustainability data and give the, the, the best benefit out of it. If you are following gender uh, equality, 
you also want to integrate uh, HR data as well as uh, some external sources data. So you, you need to integrate your sustainability to uh, other reporting metrics in organization. And what do companies do to uh, reach or overcome those challenges? Uh, usually they have Excel, the king of all the solutions because you don't need too much training, it's flexible. But I would say that Excel has some drawbacks. It's not so well designed to establish a process. Also, it's harder for Excel to integrate uh, company data. And uh, usually when you use Excel for a longer period, or many period, like many years, you see that it's not easy to maintain, especially if something is changing and you, you need to adapt your calculations. That's why I would recommend to use the database-based solution, which is process-friendly and SAP PPM is process-friendly. You can set up a process and track uh, everything, what data came, uh, who ran the calculations, so where we are at the reporting and et cetera. And I will show you later this. Uh, also databases, they usually handle more data. They can handle more data and more complex calculation than Excel. Uh, in SAP APM, if you have any change in between the calculations, you just go to the model and um, adjust it, adjust the rule. And uh, But the, you don't need to redesign all model if there are any changes done uh, or you have changes like coming from European Union standards, right? And in database uh, solution, when you have uh, various connections, you can integrate uh, uh, external data sources as well as other uh, data what is in your organization so you have uh, like a big data aggregator data hub uh, where you can report sustainability uh, kpis alongside with uh, financial data and in sap apn the uh, standards are maintained by professional what do i mean by that that we have the sample content which is some sort of uh, best practice examples for uh, companies, uh, especially for companies uh, that are beginning their journey and they want to have some sort of ideas how to uh, start, how to calculate some KPIs. Uh, we have uh, prepared the sample content where uh, fictive companies, fictive models, fictive KPIs, but you can take uh, this model for free and adapt to your company. And uh, for example, a wood taxonomy uh, data is uh, also updated from time to time. Uh, so this is kind of uh, external data which you get, you can get benefit out, out of it. Uh, before jumping to the tool, I will uh, provide you what I will want to present regarding SAP APM. Uh, firstly, I will be talking about the reporting and what if simulations. Uh, reporting usually well is used for reporting people for management, as well as uh, transparency is very important in sustainability. So you want to share your um, how you're going, how you are fulfilling your sustainability targets with the public. Uh, then we will jump to process orchestration. Uh, heads up to sustainability managers. Uh, I will show how they can. Uh, manage all the process uh, from uh, entering the data to the reporting in the tool. And the calculation part, uh, well, this part is uh, where we step in. Uh, when we start the project, uh, we have modelers. Uh, where, when we uh, create those calculations for you, uh, of course, uh, uh, we train your people and they can shadow us how it works. So once we are out of a project, uh, you, you, you have people in your inside organization who can maintain models and even create their own calculation models. Good thing to mention about uh, calculations. SAP PPM, you, SAP PPM, you don't need uh, coding experience. Uh, it's just you need to be trained uh, how to use various functions and the various parameters of those functions. 
So you don't need to go to IT people every time some standard changes, every time you need to change the calculation. A simple analyst, a clever analyst can do this uh, after he or she is trained. And finally, we will go just to have a glance how data entry looks like. Uh, we can enter data manually or we can work with your BI team to gather data, uh, automatize the data gathering. So firstly, usually we start uh, with Excel reports, feeding the model, creating the model. And after some time, we exchange this, uh, these Excel reports to some external data sources or uh, some we can directly connect to your uh, ERP systems. Uh, usual implementation process starts with uh, data gathering, of course, and it, it ends with reporting. But to make uh, things simpler uh, for this presentation, uh, I will start with uh, reporting and I will go uh, next from left uh, to right until data entry. We don't have too much time, so I will just jump in. I have pre-recording everything because I'm in business trip. I don't want to mess anything. So here is a reporting example. Uh, imagine it could be your company, but here is a fictive company, one of the sample contents I mentioned. Uh, this fictive company is manufacturing company and it tracks uh, their standards based on United Nations goals, GRI, green gas uh, protocol, and uh, uh, what, what else that they have um, manufacturing data live, they have digital twill of their manufacturing, meaning they track data live. And as you can see, they are um, producing two products, standard and premium axle shafts. They follow manufacturing data alongside with uh, carbon emissions, meaning sustainability data. That's what I was talking about that it's important to integrate uh, your other data other than sustainability to your sustainability report. That's how you get uh, best benefit. So uh, in this reporting, we have maps uh, and we can see that we have like uh, three manufacturing sites in this fictive company, China, Germany, USA, and they track carbon emissions by country, by product. They track uh, megawatt hours, electricity con consumption. And for example, here is a bar chart by product. Uh, we can drill down by selecting uh, one of the products. Uh, I can expand here and we see that uh, we see two KPIs uh, uh, by month. How Axel uh, shaft standard is created. Next, we will uh, jump up to probably one of the most important uh, KPIs in sustainability that is greenhouse gas emissions, scope one. Uh, you, you see three gra graphs from left to right. First one is for scope one, second for scope two and scope three. Uh, here we, uh, on the scope one, have the bar chart, which is, uh, uh, Again, we can drill down uh, by manufacturing site, but for example, in this uh, graph, it is different from scope two. And I will quickly show you how you can change by yourself. You just expand the model, expand the graph and switch to donut chart, apply settings. And here I also will save the layout so that this layout will uh, remain. And now I have the same donut chart just for scope one as uh, in scope two. This is kind of easier to, to, to follow uh, the data. I can see that in scope one, China manufacturing site uh, has the uh, biggest amount of uh, CO2 emissions. And whereas in scope two, uh, the USA manufacturing site has probably bigger uh, GHG scope two and Germany is probably a, a little site, so that's why it's uh, the least amount of emissions. 
But uh, on the scope free, uh, again, I see the graph, which is not uh, in line with other scope uh, emissions. So quickly, I will show you how you can change not only the graph itself, the donut, we can change a dimension from category uh, to plant. Again, always we have with drill down possibilities and to change the graph like I want for scope two, I just go to chart type, I change pi and then I need to go to dimensions and instead of category, I will choose plant. And then change drill down uh, capabilities because still I want to see everything by uh, category once I click on the manufacturing side. Apply the changes, go to the layout and save the layout so everyone else could see it. And now if I click on China manufacturing site, for example, I will see it's uh, uh, split by categories, this scope free emission split. So this is how you can customize your graphs, whatever you see, and all this is a sample content and a reporting part. Uh, one more um, cool graph is how you can follow the allocation process, how allocations are going. Here we see this Sankey chart from left to right. We start from uh, plants, then CO2 emissions are allocated to scopes scope one, scope two, scope three, and life cycle stage in the end, it's allocated to two of those products. So you can visually see how everything looks like uh, from plant to your product. And of course, everything needs to be calculated so that the model could uh, handle these calculations. This is the Sankey chart for CO2 emissions. And we have another chart uh, for megawatt hours, electricity consumption. And from this, uh, this is very similar, uh, the same dimensions, just allocating the uh, only electricity. And we can see that China and USA manufacturing sites are using the most of electricity and Germany the least. What else you can, save these uh, reports in PDF files. You can embed it to web page and share with the public. Mm, the good thing, once you run all the calculations, graphs are updated. So you can update it uh, every month uh, or every quarter. Every time you have new data, you can update and have updated sustainability report in, uh, in your web page. And uh, I noticed that uh, sustainability people also like text. So when we issue the uh, sustainability report, they also want to have a uh, explanation and a lot of text what is uh, what is done inside the organization. Okay, we don't have too much time, I will quickly jump to what if simulations. Before that, I will also show one more cool thing that you can actually create your own uh, charts. So I created the additional page. And on the left, you can see the drag and drop interface, the way you can design uh, some of the, some things are prepared. And all this, what you see on the left is prepared by modelers. You need to have uh, to be, that it will be prepared. And then somebody in the reporting uh, team or just a sustainability manager can drag and drop those graphs inside the pages and basically create uh, their own report. They can create text as well and etc. But all this has to be prepared in modeling part where we'll, uh, I will show you that part later. And again, of course, you can share your, your customized report, whatever you created in, in a PDF. And now I will show you how the, the what if simulation works. So this company uh, has uh, two what-if simulations. Uh, I will quickly maybe pause a little bit the video and explain you 
Uh, this graph on the left is the base scenario. It is uh, scope one, scope two, scope three, how it is calculated right now. On the right side of the graph, we see the same graph and currently it has same values as the base case scenario. And later I will just change the um, parameters and show you uh, how the model recalculates live the result and shows you, shows you the data, how it would look like uh, before implementing any changes. And all these are carbon emissions in tons of CO2. So here uh, on the left side, we have two uh, parameters and you are considering energy mix, uh, whether to switch to renewable energy and you can see what happens. You just apply and simulate. Simulation is going, simulation is done. And we see that scope two is reduced significantly, of course. And then you can change another parameter uh, to choose your delivery mode from truck to truck plus train. So introduce train. And of course it's uh, impacting uh, only scope three since these are deliveries. That's how you kind of, if you're choosing, you know, which of the initiative to uh, implement for the next year, renewable energy or to implement trains, you can decide uh, by running simulations. And of course, again, those parameters need to be uh, feed in into the model. And here is another what if simulation. It also worked based on uh, our parameter changes. This is all what I want to quickly show you on what if uh, simulations. Next, I jump to process orchestration. Here, uh, sustainability manager can set up a process how everybody can uh, collect the data, then check the data, execute model, and uh, finally uh, do the reporting. In this process, we see four uh, activity blocks. Uh, there is uh, review input, update input data, execution, and reporting. And under those blocks, there are activities. You can see uh, under review input data, two numbers, zero and seven, meaning uh, there are zero activities done out of seven. To deploy the, before doing the process, you need to deploy it. Once you deploy it, uh, all the relevant parties that need to do any of the activities will be notified by the email and will go directly to the same tool and do their job, what they need to do. They will see only, of course, their activities. Now we are seeing the what sustainability manager will see. Uh, that is all activities that needs to be fulfilled. So for example, we have review input data. We see that user uh, cater this is default user for SAP PPM, uh, needs to review um, all of the data that is feeded into the calculation model. And what he needs to do, he needs to click on the one of activities, there are seven activities, and just review if the data is correct, if the data is coming. Sometimes it might be there's no data, so now we see that okay, data is coming, looks fine. So if it looks fine, uh, he or she just goes to uh, the process uh, and it needs to mark this activity whether in approval or completed. If it's in approval, it will go to another person who will approve what a reviewer did. But in this activity, we don't have uh, approval. So Cutter just simply puts the activity state to complete it. The other example is on updating input data, where we have four I principle. We see there are two users, Cutter and Super, for all the activities. Cutter will review the data and update the data, and Super will approve the data. So now Carter, what he needs to do, update emission factors for transportation. 
Uh, to update this data, uh, he or she can choose to update it manually or through Excel templates. So I quickly show how it's done uh, in manual fashion. He opens the table and updates the emission factors. What he needs to do just to press edit button. And it works like, uh, yeah, okay, like in Excel or anywhere else, just enter new number. Of course, when you have a lot of data, I, I said there are uh, Excel templates. You can download data and then upload uh, all the data. Oops, I, I think I, sorry. Yeah. Okay, video is running once again, this update process. So you update this manually, one of the emission factors. After it's updated, uh, Carter will need to go again to his activity, tell uh, that activity now is done from his side. Uh, it, it should go to in approval stage. So here in activity state, we say it's in approval. And then user super gets notified by email. Okay, I have activity, after upload the data, I need to check for I principle to users checking. Once he or she checks, super user says, okay, it's done. After all is uh, all data is updated, all data is input. Somebody has to run calculations. Calculations are predefined in the calculation model I will show you just uh, after this process orchestration. And you just run model one by one, functions that need to be run and calculate the result. After result is calculated, of course, there is a reporting part. So all those reports, graphs, they are created here. In the, pro in the end of the process, we see the reporting and reporting is done. So somebody needs then to analyze the the, the reports. Okay, I think this is it for process orchestration. Now, after it, I jump to modeling part. It will be very, very quick. So this is a modeling part. We call it a professional interface. Later, I will show you drag and drop interface. So what do, do we have here? We have the same blocks of functions. We always start by integrated data sources. And I just want you to show you that what data is inside this uh, data sources. We also have documentation on each of the calculation step. You can write documentation. So I opened here the one of the input tables and you can imagine uh, this is a sample content. You can easily delete this data and add your own data your own company data. So technically, if you exchange all your all the sample content input data with your company's data, you will have a running uh, a running model. But of course, it's a uh, more a dream than a reality. Oftentimes it's uh, companies have different structure of data and it's not not so easy to map everything. However, you can grasp some ideas in this model and see how, what KPIs are calculated and how they are calculated. After integrating data sources, we review data and everything is uh, processed in the calculations. Here, I just, uh, sorry, I, I will just jump a little bit. Yeah, I show you here, add one of the calculation steps uh, with, uh, we see here eight rules and each rule has its own parameters. Uh, those parameters, as I said, you don't need any coding. You just change parameters. And uh, yeah, you, you, you still need to write formulas uh, for your calculations like in Excel, but there is no coding. And for example, if something in rule one needs to be changed, you go here and change the formula, but you don't need to redesign you know, all, other, all other functions. So this is a, a power of uh, a CPP APM. And again, all the steps have documentation part. 
you can describe model or can describe what he did so that sustainability manager would understand uh, what was done in specifically in this step. This definitely increases the calculation transparency. Yeah, this is processing part and after processing, there is a reporting part where all those reports are created and that's how in the report tab, you can choose those graphs and uh, you can set up your uh, reports. Now I jump to modeling flow. This is exactly the same model, the same calculation, just different interface. It's more like user-friendly, more fancy. But what I like about it, that when you select one of the tables, this is the same table, there are arrows and you see how it's related to other functions, where it goes, where data goes. And uh, I'm just showing you that this is exactly the same table I showed you in the previous interface where you can enter your own data and switch to your company data. And uh, yeah, but of course you need to do it with, with all your input data to, to have the model working. So once I click on any of the function, I see arrows, I can expand and uh, on the, here on the right, I can change the parameters of those functions. And here basically I just show you that there are different functions. Uh, for example, uh, I want to see in the processing part, emission production activity calculation. It consumes the data from IoT uh, and all other like tables, uh, sourcing tables. So you can understand which step, what data consumes and what goes next. Arrows are showing that. And later this calculation is going to the, yeah, and we, we have this documentation and you can imagine Anyone coming here and reading documentation, following arrows, understanding how calculations are made. It's easier to explain it to your stakeholders, to employees to talk about because you have everything in front of your eyes. Here is a, a yellow ones are join functions, uh, then agree where you make allocation to uh, cost uh, objects to products. So basically you need to, to do those calculations, you need to be trained. It requires some time, but anyone inside the project will be trained and later you understand how to create those reports that they will come in the reporting uh, tab. So that I wanted to show you in calculations, a quick recap, what I just showed you, because I think there is a lot and I spoke a lot. Uh, first, we went through reporting where we can drill down, analyze, make decisions, create our own graph, share PDF and run what if simulation. Later, we went to process orchestration. We had roles. I didn't show you teams, but it's the same approach. We just assign roles to the teams. We, we have responsibilities, who is reviewer, who is approver, timeline, the process tasks, et cetera. Then we went deeper in the calculations a little bit uh, where you can join, allocate, calculate. There are some also other functions like machine learning. So it's best benefit that uh, this calculation models, you, you, have, you can have many calculations models and use those not only for sustainability, but also for manufacturing, for finance, for HR, and uh, many more. And uh, yeah, we also grasp some uh, entering the data manually, but there is also a possibility to automatize input and connect uh, directly to the database. So thank you for listening. Uh, Hopefully uh, there was uh, a little benefit to show you what other, that there are other calculation and sustainability management tools than uh, the Nexo. Yeah. Thanks, Gedris. Uh, uh, while, while we are waiting for uh, any, any, any questions, uh, Gedris has some uh, links in the end of the presentation and all the materials will be shared. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, 
uh, what I would like to ask you, uh, currently we, the, the projects, some of the projects we have implemented are uh, uh, for companies that are using this tool. Uh, and by the way, these companies doesn't have SAP as ERP system. So it's a standalone mm -hmm. solution. Uh, 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 agnostic to any ad, any 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 data source but these companies have implemented uh, PAPM uh, for profitability and performance management so basically for uh, cost allocation to understand profitability of the products uh, do you see a potential uh, in these what if simulations to simulate not just uh, let's say impact on the environment by uh, creating some initiatives but also at the same time to simulate uh, impact, financial impact of that uh, initiative, for example, to cost price of the product or service the company sells. Mm, I see it because uh, reporting uh, part can take uh, the result from different models. So for example, if you have in your company, something calculated for finance, right? So you allocate, you calculate profitability, and uh, then you have another model which allocates uh, CO2 emissions to the same products. So what you can do in your reporting, you can connect uh, those two different calculation models, two different streams, and present it in one window. That's how maybe it's easier for someone to make decision uh, maybe not by product, but for example, today is the topic that you don't maybe want, want to uh, collaborate with some companies who work in uh, other certain countries. Uh, yeah, you have some political reasons, for example, to make some decisions and you want to see what you lose uh, and what will be the impact on sustainability and then to reveal it to your uh, stakeholders. So definitely this PPM uh, can be used for having, you know, the same object just from different angle. You can have uh, the product uh, in context of sustainability and the product like we saw in the sample content in, in context of uh, manufacturing. But Perfect. the key is to always, you know, integrate data only then, then only then I see the biggest uh, benefit to, to companies.